Now, uh, let's just look again at the story we were bringing to you uh, last hour, that police in New York are investigating another suspicious package similar to the one sent to top U.S. Democrats earlier this week. Uh, the item was sent to the uh, Tribeca Grill in New York City, which is owned by the actor Robert De Niro. Uh, at least eight, eight such packages were sent to prominent sites and people, including Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Uh, the New York headquarters of CNN uh, was also evacuated on Wednesday after a device was sent to one of its contributors. And uh, we can just show you the live shot now because as we understand it, this device, which we believe hasn't exploded, as with the others, hasn't exploded, uh, well, bomb squad officers have uh, examined it and we believe it's being removed in some sort of uh, specialist vehicle. Uh, we don't know whether it has been entirely diffused or partially diffused or, or, or what the scenario is, but uh, this uh, suspicious item is being taken away in this convoy uh, for further examination or uh, disposal. And uh, because none of the other uh, packages, devices have exploded, uh, obviously forensic experts will have quite a lot of material to work with as they try to uh, progress this investigation and discover who is behind the sending of these suspicious packages. So that's uh, the live uh, image coming to us from uh, New York right now. Let's return to the news that President Trump has criticized the U.S. media and appealed to politicians to show greater civility after explosive devices were sent to high-profile Democrats, including Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, as well as to the headquarters of the news channel CNN. The president uh, criticized for those comments, uh, criticized for being hypocritical by some, but he has doubled down on that uh, criticism of the media in another tweet uh, issued in the last few minutes. Well, let's get the very latest now uh, with Laura Podesta from CBS News. She's in New York, uh, close to the restaurant owned by the actor Robert De Niro, where uh, bomb squad officers were dealing with another suspicious package a short while ago, although I think it's been taken away now, has it, Laura? Yes, that's absolutely right, Anita. So if earlier we were talking um, when I was up by CNN a few miles north of here, now we're down by Tribeca, and that's because another package with a suspected pipe bomb was addressed to Robert De Niro at his Tribeca Productions and his restaurant, which is right behind me here. So that happened around 5 o'clock this morning. We know that security personnel, they called the uh, New York Police Department and said that they had this suspicious package on their hands. That package was then taken by a bomb squad to a more secure location to be analyzed uh, about an hour and a half later. So this area is secure. Um, that's why you see traffic um, and the road has been reopened behind me. Okay, uh, Laura, thank you for that update. Laura Podesta uh, from CBS News. And just to update you as well, we're also hearing from CBS News that a suspicious package sent to the former Vice President Joe Biden has been intercepted at a postal facility in Delaware, we're told. Uh, the um, security services had said that they were uh, working on the understanding that another suspicious package had been sent uh, this time to the former Vice President Joe Biden and a confirmation from uh, CBS News that a suspicious package sent to Mr. Biden has been intercepted at a postal facility in Delaware. Uh, meanwhile, that uh, device sent to the restaurant owned or suspicious package sent to the uh, restaurant owned by Robert De Niro, as Laura was explaining, has been uh, taken away. Now, the headlines for you on BBC Newsroom Live. It is exactly a quarter to one. Well, our correspondent Gary Donoghue is in Washington for us. And Gary, I'll talk to you about this in just a moment. But some news we're just hearing is that President Trump, he's ordering troops down to that border with Mexico. And th this is because of this, uh, the caravan migrants that are heading that way. Yeah, I think, Simon, we talked last hour, didn't we, about... Uh... The, the migrant caravan being a, a big political issue for Donald Trump in the midterms and how these devices were obscuring that. Well, I think this you're seeing is perhaps part of the pivot back to the issues which uh, Donald Trump thinks he's strong on for these elections. So what we're hearing is that possibly 800 federal troops will be sent down to the border. Now, there are, there are tricky rules about what 
what uh, uh, U.S. military can do in term, in t internally in the United States, uh, going back to their, their founding fathers, etc. They won't be able to do any kind of apprehension or any kind of fighting other than self-defense. They'll be assisting, but it will still be the Border Patrol who does all the, the intercepting and the arresting. Bear in mind, this caravan is miles and miles and miles away. Uh, it's on foot uh, and it's travelling, you know, as quickly as you can walk in each in a day. It's uh, it's not going to get there any, anywhere bef before the the midterm elections or anything like it. Uh, but they feel the need to reinforce the border with these extra numbers. Okay. Now let's. <laughs> it's difficult to say this without a wry smile. <clears throat> We've got President. Uh, I'd nearly forgot his name. President Trump there, talk, calling for a, a more civil tone in public discourse. President Trump. Yes, calling for unity, uh, calling uh, also for people to stop sort of uh, denigrating uh, their opponents uh, in, in political discourse. He has an interesting reference in his one, his, one of his tweets to comparing people <clears throat> with uh, historical villains, as he puts it. Now, I think that's probably a reference to himself and the, and the comparisons that have been drawn by some between him uh, and others in the past, you know, Mussolini and Hitler. That's, those have been used against him on a number of occasions by people here and abroad. But yes, he's saying that there should be a more civil tone. Uh, but he's also blaming the media for the anger, he says, that is out there in society. And let's be clear, uh, he does attack people pretty viciously uh, at his uh, rallies, the rallies of his base that he's been conducting over these last few weeks. And there are times where he does talk directly about violence. He talked about violence in terms of, of a congressman doing a body slam on a journalist. Uh, I've been at rallies before where he's talked about people uh, wanting to punch protesters, him wanting to punch protesters who were making a noise at his rally. So he's not certainly ever advocated this kind of action, but there has been violent talk in the past. Uh, but he now seems to think it's time for all that to come to an end. But, you know, he said that the acts were despicable. He said they will be hunted down. We will see how quickly that can happen. And we will see what people's response is to, to his call and whether or not he'll heed his own advice. That's the, the bottom line, isn't it? Gary, thank you very much. Gary Donoghue there in Washington. Another suspect package has been discovered in the United States, this time addressed to the actor Robert De Niro at his restaurant in New York. And that follows the pipe bomb sent earlier this week to prominent Democrats like Hillary Clinton and to the news network CNN. Well, President Trump has been quick to point the finger at the mainstream media once again, he said, for stirring up anger in American society. And the president's relationship with the media has been very turbulent indeed ever since his election campaign with his accusations of fake news, prompting over 200 journalists to sign an open letter this morning condemning the president's behaviour towards the press as un-American and utterly unlawful. Well, we can discuss this now with Eugene Scott. Uh, he's a political reporter from the Washington Post, and he joins me uh, from their newsroom. Thanks so much for being with us. Um, let me just read you, um, I'm sure you've seen uh, President Trump's uh, tweet today saying um, a very uh, big part of the anger we see today in our society is caused by the purposely false and inaccurate reporting of the mainstream media. So es essentially he is linking that to the, to the sending of these pipe bombs. Absolutely, and that's uh, unfortunate considering how little information we have about who actually sent them and the motivations behind uh, who sent them. But uh, the reality is the president has stoked anger um, and even hate since he launched his presidential campaign against both the media, uh, liberals, and people who just do not think like his base. Uh, what he has not done is taken responsibility for his words and actions that could have created this. We know just last week the president uh, praised a Republican congressman for physically assaulting a journalist. We also know that the president has said at a campaign rally that he wishes he could punch liberal activists. And so the reality is, despite what he just tweeted, Americans who have paying, been paying close attention to his presidency and even his campaign know where much of the motivation for violence in this current political climate is coming from. So you're saying if anyone is stoking violence, it's him, not the media? The president last week celebrated a journalist being punched. Seven days later, perhaps, bombs were sent 
to the main network that he criticizes. I do not think that those are a coincidence. They may be, but I don't think they are at this point. Do you think relations between the press, the media in the United States, and the White House have ever been this bad, have ever sunk this low? We have never in the American media had a president praise a member of his party for physically assaulting people in our industry. Uh, we've never had a president uh, stoke chants of CNN sucks hours after a, a network received bombs uh, aimed at a long-term critic of the president. Uh, we've just never had this before. If we've had something similar to this, uh, it doesn't come to mind. Um, and we're just in a time where I think many people are wondering if anything's going to change anytime soon. If it is, the person to lead that change would be the president of the United States himself. And nothing suggests that we're moving in that direction right now. I suppose from his point of view, uh, fueling this hatred, if you like, of, of the U.S. media, it plays to his base uh, and, uh, and some of his supporters um, kind of agree with him. It certainly plays to his base. The reality is that the hostility that we are seeing uh, towards the mainstream media did not start with President Trump. Uh, the conservative media has been very critical of the mainstream media, and the far right media in particular uh, has just said n numerous things that have shown uh, some conservative Americans that the lives of journalists do not matter. Uh, but what a president does uh, is take leadership and shapes the culture and worldview of his tribe. What the president could do is help his people realize that despite perhaps people viewing things differently than they do, um, that they are still people, that they are still a American and that they still have the right to express their views and so that they should not be receiving bombs whether or not they're journalists or n members of the Democratic Party. Is there any chance of any sort of compromise do you think between the, the media and the White House and the president? Uh, I, you know he doesn't go to the White House correspondence dinner for example every year but it, it, you know is there any sort of hope of any sort of reconciliation? I believe a compromise would start with the president admitting that he has played a negative role in this relationship and that his supporters have taken his lead uh, and that that is wrong. The likelihood of the president admitting that his words and actions have been wrong is really low. Um, and so a compromise happening without that uh, degree of self-awareness and honesty um, and apologizing to me is almost impossible. Uh, Eugene Scott, very good to talk to you. Thank you uh, so much for being with us. Eugene Scott there from the Washington Post Thank newspaper. You. Thank you. Well, Mark Lambie is a manager at MSA Security. He worked as a member of the Connecticut State Bomb Police uh, Squad and was also on a special FBI task force which dealt with the federal response to weapons of mass destruction or bombing events. Mark, thanks for being uh, with us. So the race is on now, obviously, to find the person or people behind this. We've all seen the images of the packages that were sent. What clues do you think they reveal? Well, in looking at the, the packages, obviously, you have the same type of envelope. It's a manila envelope. I believe it's padded. Um, the person or group of people who are sending these are using, uh, I believe, six stamps to get them um, on each package. And that way you can sort of drop that in a postal bin and avoid going to a counter which would have some type of CCTV and then the labels themselves I think are all generated off a computer printer. So I like that that's an interesting point there about putting too many stamps on um, so avoid the CCTV at the counters but of course there will there's so much CCTV in and around uh, lots of different places with all these devices being posted you would have thought he would he or she or they would have been caught somewhere. I, and I, I would think that, um, you know, my former colleagues in law enforcement are tracking down a lot of stuff because, as you said, there are cameras everywhere um, and it's kind of hard to avoid getting yourself caught on film somewhere. And I know that one of those devices was uh, left at George Soros's residence and I would only imagine that he has some type of extensive camera system uh, covering all of his property. And what do you make of the actual, you know, the devices themselves? They seem fairly crude. Of course, none of them 
went off. What do you make of that? Well, it could be just something in the design um, that uh, the person or people that designed these, uh, you know, they m made a mistake in how they were doing it, or, you know, maybe their intention was not to have the, the device go off. Or maybe it was just to uh, scare someone. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the phrase crude only because uh, when it comes to making a device, uh, simple works. It's very effective. The more uh, extravagant and uh, the more you add to making some type of device, if you want it to be very elaborate, you actually uh, decrease your odds of it uh, functioning as designed. And um, simple is very effective. Oh, that's a really interesting point, and we appreciate your insights, uh, Mark Lamberty. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Clint Van Zant is the former supervisor in the FBI's Behavioural Science Unit, and he was also the Bureau's chief hostage negotiator. He led the team that identified the Unabomber and profiled Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh. He's in Virginia uh, now, Clint, thanks for being with us. That's uh, quite the CV. Given your experience, what do you make of the patterns of what we've seen so far? Well, I think the authorities, the FBI, ATF and other agencies that are working this are really on a two track investigation. Track number one says, as your, corp as your correspondent suggests, uh, these are potential explosive devices. There are 10 of them. And I think all investigators are working this case as if they are real devices. Obviously, the people that they were sent to, that would basically kill potentially two former presidents, the secretary of state and many other government officials. So we're going all out trying to find the person or persons responsible. But realize the other side of that investigation, just like a set of railroad tracks going down the road, that second track says, well, these are devices that are built to scare us, to terrify us, but not to go off. That one or more of the devices we know uh, was missing an essential part that would allow that to become an actual explosive device. So is this someone who's simply trying to terrorize us by the sending of these devices, just like one of the devices had an envelope of white powder, which many immediately suggest could be anthrax, well, again, this wasn't anthrax. If it's not anthrax, perhaps it's not a real bomb, too. Until we find out who's responsible, though, we will pursue this case as if the bombs are real and the bomber is out there perhaps making more bombs today. I see. Yeah, that's interesting. So regardless almost of whether they were viable or what the intention was, you have to proceed as if they were. Um, if he or she or they aren't tracked down quickly, do you think there's a risk of more devices being sent out? I, I think it depends on the purpose the devices were originally sent. If they were simply sent to get our attention to terrorize us without any actual intent to kill, I don't think we'll see any other devices. However, if the bomber or bombers now are fully aware that their devices did not function, then, as a friend of mine suggests, we'll start to see a uh, pipe bomb 2.0, where the bombers will go back, they'll improve the device, they'll find another method of delivery, and we'll see a new wave of these devices coming out. Yeah, time really of the essence uh, for the FBI and other agencies. OK, Clint Van Zandt, thank you very much for your expertise. Thank you. Good night.